In today's battle, we are facing King Sakuna94, and this is one of the higher level players in the Pokemon Brick Bronze competitive scene. And um, I mean, I, I he had the uh, he had one of the bronze crowns, so I, I forgot exactly what his rank was, but I'll say that it was reasonably high. So you can see though that he has quite the good setup right here. I mean, I like I like that a lot of it isn't really legendary Pokemon. I mean, that Blaziken is probably a speed boost, Uber is Blaziken, but that's really all he's using that's not legendary. And it is nice getting to see that in the leaderboard because like in this game, I mean, since Primals have been released, that's basically what a lot of the players that are up there try to use. So anyways, he leads with his Shuckle. And once again, I always say this, whenever you see somebody with a lead Pokemon, like a Pokemon with, you know, entry hazards, you, you should always anticipate it unless the player is really, really high level. Because most of the time, they're going to go with their entry hazard Pokemon. So of course, I went into um, Sizer because I was planning to just fire off a U-turn and then bring in Skarmory to hit him with the defog. So now I was thinking I may as well just go for a Brave Bird in case he tries to go for a second Encore. And if he goes for um, one of his uh, spikes or whatever, then I'll just defog it off. So, you know, luckily right there, I think he was trying to make a prediction or something. I, I actually did not know what that was for, but, you know, I'm not going to complain about that one. Maybe he was expecting me to go for spikes or stub rock or something. So anyways, now I'm thinking, well, he might try and switch now that I'm locked into uh, Brave Bird. Because, I mean, Skarmory is good enough, but it doesn't really hit amazingly. So, like, you know, this would be a great opportunity to bring something like Cloyster in. So, you know, I was I was a bit afraid here. I didn't know what to expect. But I was like, well, I may as well just stay in. Because, you know, if he doesn't switch, then this would actually be great. Because then I just take out the Shuckle with very little consequence other than having to get um, a bad matchup. So, you know, that's great. Shuckle has been eliminated, and he pulls out his Blaziken. So, um, in light of this, I've, I took some time to consider this because, I mean, Speed Boost Blaziken can be really, really dangerous if it gets out of hand. And um, I was looking at Snorlax because it has the ability to take fat, meaning it'll probably stomach the Flare Blitz that he's probably going to throw out really good. Although, I mean, at the same time, I was thinking, man, if this guy starts making some predictions, I could really suffer right there. And, I mean, this Garmory has 30, so... I mean, I think it's worth sacrificing my Skarmory here just so I can take out the Blaziken. And the good thing is that this is his Mega too, so, um, you know, it's going to be a waste. And if he goes for Protect, you know, it's not a big issue because I'll just follow up with a, another Brave Bird and that should be enough to KO this Blaziken. So right here, he goes for Flare Blitz and no matter what, it's not going to one-shot me because I have Sturdy. And that ensures that now I can hit this guy with a Brave Bird. And the good thing is I didn't get burned because that would actually be a bit annoying. So I don't think I'd be able to take care of the Blaziken if he actually got the burn. But in this case, we are lucky to have avoided that. So now we lost our um, Skarmory, but that was at the expense of this guy's Shuckle and his Mega Blaziken. So I'd say it was a great trade-off. So here I go into Charizard thinking, well, if I can get a good matchup here, I could probably clean up and win the game. Although he start, or he sends out Cloyster, and um, this Cloyster is going to be really, really dangerous if I'm not careful. Because really, I don't really have any Pokemon that can really come into this too easily. And um, I mean, I was thinking Sizer is probably my best bet here because I can Bullet Punch once he lowers his defense enough. And, um, I mean, Snorlax could come in to take in the ice type attacks, but it's not really going to be able to hit back against the Cloyster. Heliolisk probably will get one-shotted, and, um, Tangro is probably going to get one-shotted or hit really hard from the Icicle Spear. So I was thinking, well, off the line, I'd probably benefit a lot from just going for a Flare Blitz, because if he attacks, then, you know, that's going to be great, because he's probably not going to be able to KO this Charizard, and then I can finish him off. Or if he tries to set up, you know this would still be a free Flare Blitz right to this Cloyster. So, you know, it's going to be some good damage and good enough to probably where something like Sizer can come in and Bullet Punch or something like Snorlax should be able to come in and potentially finish him off. So, right here, the Flare Blitz does massive damage, which is great. Although now he goes for the Shell Smash. And, um, you know, that's not great because now his, his attack stat is going to be really high. And, I mean, Cloyster is a Pokemon that can be really, really dangerous if you don't have the right Pokemon to counter it. Something like Milotic would be great, although I don't have that with me right now. Like, any bulky water type would counter this really well. Toxapex, especially, is probably the best check for Cloyster in this scene. So, anyways, here I go into Snorlax. 
um, in case he goes for an Icicle Spear, he goes for a Rock Blast, which makes sense because it is a super effective attack. But, you know, we do take that in pretty good. And now, I just hope that he goes for an Icicle Spear because, I mean, I have the ability to take Fat, which halves the damage of it. So, basically, it's a resisted attack. And he's probably going to go for it, thinking it's going to be a good stab option. So, right here, he does, and it doesn't really do um, great damage. So, I hit him with a Body Slam, and it is enough to take out the Cloister, which is great. Snorlax definitely did his job here. Although, now, he's probably going to go down to whatever comes in because Snorlax, of course is really slow and um it's not going to be too useful unless i get a rest so i mean here i i consider my options because i mean i could try switching out before it starts setting up because i know that this guy is probably running multi-scale and dragon dance and i i don't want to deal with that if i can avoid it so i go into tangro here on his uh dragonite and most of the time dragonite does not run flying type stab i mean in in later generations like gen generation 7 it will run um, fly or Joe Wingby in Gen 8, but fly with um, the Fly Neum Z Z Crystal. But I don't, I don't think this guy is going to be running. It. It's pretty unlikely. So I decided to go for a Sleep Powder. Although now he's at plus two, which is really dangerous. But Tangiro should be able to take most of his hits. And um, I was thinking, well, I could start firing off some. Uh, what do you call it? It's the oh yeah, Rock Tomes to lower his speed, and also because it is super effective, so it should be doing nice damage. Although, I mean, I was also thinking I could bring in Charizard just to Dragon Claw. Although, it is risky because if he wakes up on the first turn, then I'm going to lose my Charizard. And I'll be in a really dangerous position because this Dragon Knight, once again, can get out of control if you don't deal with it effectively. So, I get the Rock Tome off. Now, the great thing is that this isn't um, a weakness policy Dragon Knight. Because if it was, then that would be incredibly dangerous because, you know, then he'd probably be able to deal monstrous damage so right here what i wasn't expecting was for this guy to be running hurricane that's the first time i've ever seen anybody run it now unfortunately he lands it and we get hit with the confusion and then we we have to hit ourselves of course that's just my luck but um it it, it is what it is so anyways though i do try and uh go for another rock tome i mean i went for sleep powder the last turn so i knew he was gonna wake up although unfortunately because of the confusion we missed now he goes for a hurricane and uh, once again, it's gonna land and finish off my tank drops. So you know, now I'm now I'm in a dangerous position because I mean I'm not entirely too sure how I'm gonna deal with this. And I think about Charizard in case he doesn't have any Dragon type stat, but he probably will have Earthquake, which will do um, really big damage since he's at plus two. So I decided to pull out my Sizer. Sizer is really just the Pokemon that I can rely on because I mean it hits so hard with Bullet Punch and it will get speed. So, luckily that does huge damage to the Dragonite. I mean, he goes for an Earthquake, which also does huge damage back. And I just follow up with another Bullet Punch. And the great thing about this Dragonite right here is that he's not running Extreme Speed. Because he probably would have gone for it if he had it. So, he switches out into Gloss Gore instead. And that's fine, because, I mean, now the Dragonite is no longer that scary. Because, I mean, he lost his plus two. So, I mean, I could, I could use a lot of my other Pokemon here and probably come in safely. So anyways though, the bullet punch actually does really really high damage to this glass score. So he's probably running um, a different EV spread, probably a sweeping set. Or maybe he's not even running um, the right EVs. Although I'd like to think he is because this is um, this is a hidden ability glass score. So you would think that they would go out of their way to ensure that they get the right moves on this guy. So anyways, I go for a bullet punch now. He has protect which is too bad because now he regenerates enough HP to where he can probably survive another bullet punch. So I'm thinking this is probably the time to sacrifice the Snorlax because I mean Snorlax isn't going to be doing anything else in this game. So it may well it, it may as well go down here to this glass goer and um, by sacrificing it now I get a free switch in into one of my other Pokemon. So, I mean, I look at Charizard, it is a bit tempting, but, I mean, I figured that Heliolisk is probably the better play here. I mean, seeing that this Glasgow doesn't have much defense, I would think that Flare Blitz would do massive damage, but I figured that Heliolisk would be better because he probably will not anticipate a Surf, and he'd probably go for an Earthquake, thinking that he's going to get a free KO right here. So, I mean, I went for the Surf, and uh, the great thing is he didn't predict that because if we went to Dragonite, that would actually be problematic, but he doesn't, so there goes the Glasgow. That problem is gone. Now he goes into his Shaman, which uh, which really isn't you know too big an issue because I mean Charizard comes in for free on this guy, especially because I have that quad resistance to grass. So I mean, what is this guy really gonna do to the Charizard? I mean, the only thing he could do is air slash spam because there's a chance he could get 
the 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 um the outspeed and you know that could be an issue because Charger doesn't really have great special defense although I'm gonna just hope that he doesn't get that here and of course I'm gonna go for a dragon dance to ensure that I can um I can get the speed and he goes for an air slash weak damage really did not do anything so this is the great the great opportunity right here to go for a flare blitz of course that's gonna one shot there's no way the shame is gonna live and uh the recoil is just enough to where we can survive so that basically is gonna ensure a checkmate he goes into his dragonite here although unfortunately for him he's low and there's no way he's surviving a dragon claw so that my friends is gg right there that was a great game